Good morning, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. And today, our adventure takes us to one of the former homes of this man. And it's also the place that they claim that Joni Mitchell wrote the song Big Yellow Taxi about. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. It actually wouldn't be too far out of line to say that just about everybody that I have um, found a kinship to, any of the stars or any of the writers or actors or anybody that's been out in Hollywood, they've all pretty much lived in this place. Good morning, pal. How you doing today? He's ready to rock. We're out going for our morning walk and then I'm gonna head off and go do some vlogging. I was watching some of the hurricane coverage and some of the relief effort stuff last night and that is gnarly. Man, my heart goes out to all the people in Houston right now. Oh, you know what? It dawned on me today that I am like, I'm like less than two weeks away from um, the time that I give away my green sunglasses. I do it every 100 episodes and I just realized that I hadn't figured out a way or who I'm gonna give them to or um, how I'm gonna go about that. And I, I wanna give them away, so put in the comments below what you think would be a good way or um, why I should give them to you if you want them. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, I hadn't really thought about it. I, um, it dawned on me this morning, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to replace these pretty soon, so I should probably figure out a good method of giving them to somebody who will appreciate them or will want them for all the little experiences they've seen. These have been to Sweden, they've been on Elvis's gate, they've been in Ike and Tina's house, so they've seen quite a bit of history in their 100 days. <laughs> all right, so I do have somewhat of a surprise for you guys. Tomorrow, I'm actually taking us on a field trip, like a real field trip. As long as nothing goes wrong, we're going out of Los Angeles and I'm gonna bring you what I would call an epic vlog. I hope everything goes well, but you have that to look forward to. I think no matter what, it's gonna be good, but this could be a lot of yours, probably your favorite one. It's been requested a lot and um, Sometimes it just takes time and money and various things have to fall into place to make things happen, especially when it's a um, doing the kind of vlogs I do. I do seven days a week, so you can't do everything um, as quickly as you want. And tomorrow I have been to this place. I have seen it and everything, but I've never gotten to vlog it. So tomorrow, do not miss out on tomorrow's vlog. I promise you. Well gang, here we are on Sunset. What was once the single house of Ala Nazimova, famous actress of the silent screen. And once owned the famous hotel of the Garden of Allah. The shopping plaza where they say that Joni Mitchell sang, they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. See, Alo was actually a Broadway star for 10 years and got a deal to come out here to Hollywood, which was kind of surprising because her kind of her look was that she had a mustache. Where she was from, that was considered a beauty mark. And so she had a mustache that the studio wanted her to get rid of, but they apparently saw something in her because they paid her $13,000 a week, where at the time Mary Pickford was only making 10, which, <laughs> only 10, right? So Ala had bought this house and was living here and her career started to take a little bit of a turn, so she decided to invest her money into a few movies that she thought would be successes. And these were lavish productions, but they were maybe a little bit too lavish for the day because they both tanked and she lost almost all of her money. So one night she was always known for being quite a partier and always hosting a lot of guests here. She had wild animals, like wild birds on the property and would have her friends like Valentino and Gilbert and Chaplin and people like that out here. One night she has a couple 
name the Allens who say, you know what you should do? You have three and a half acres here. You should actually open a hotel. Put some bungalows around the property, turn your main house into a hotel, and make some money off of it since it's a big party here anyway. So she decides to do that, and she gives them all of her money. They build this, basically take her house, They paved that, put a U-style driveway right here, and it went to the main house, which they built the main house up to be a much bigger place. And on this three and a half acres of land right here was what became known as the Garden of Allah, which if you've ever read any Jazz Age literature, you've probably read about it. Faulkner lived here, Raymond Chandler lived here. Um, they even say that in 1921, <clears throat> before this was a hotel, that Albert Einstein came and stayed here with her. Now, they opened this place up in 1927. They built it and made it up to an iconic Hollywood standard. And then the Allens ran off with all of her money. So when she went to have like this opening party, she really had nothing left. And, um, but that didn't stop her. This became, like I said, party central. This was known for anybody who was at anybody lived here or wanted to live here. Cary Grant couldn't even afford to live here. But W.C. Fields lived here. Tallulah Bankhead lived here. The Fairbanks lived here at one point. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Ernest Hemingway. Rachmaninoff and Harpo Marx were next door neighbors, which is kind of funny because Harpo is a really accomplished musician. And uh, it's just be funny to think about what they would have talked about and then they were hanging out. And they actually had a pool here. They built a pool that resembled the Black Sea, which is where Allah was from. And that pool is said to have been where the uh, Nazi Socialist Party of Hollywood first had its first meeting when the whole Hollywood blacklist became a thing. They say that it was actually at the pool here that they had their very first meeting. Um, Lupe Velez lived here. The, I mean, really, the list is endless. Um, Jackie Gleason. And what's sad is that pretty much right after they opened this place, the Great Depression hit and it hit Allah pretty hard and she ended up having to sell it. Um, eventually she would get to move back here, not into the main house, but humblingly she ended up in one of the smaller cottages, you know, one of the smaller bungalows in the back. But what was also pretty interesting was that this was said to be the, uh, the original meeting place of the sewing circle. And the sewing circle was, I guess, a Hollywood underground of um, kind of industry lesbians, like actresses, uh, wardrobe, anyone in the business. And they would meet up out here as like a safety zone um, because Allah was said to have actually hired an actor would pay him 10% of her yearly um, income to pretend to be her husband or her boyfriend, and that way she could live her free lifestyle here. But it's also said that she did break that to have an affair with John Gilbert here. Um, Greta Garbo lived here at one point. Now, like I said, what was sad was that Ala eventually would die here in 1945, and then the Garden of Allah would stay open for a handful of more years, and then it was finally closed at the end of the 50s, and they had a big sign right here on the front that had a uh, public auction, and they auctioned off everything on the property. One of the cool things is that the man who built the sign for the Garden of Allah, his son actually now owns the original model of the whole grounds and turned it into a table, like put it in a big glass case and uh, turned it into a table. There's nothing left other than just this, what was once paradise and now a parking lot. Let's go take a little bit of a closer look. So here are the grounds that the great F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway would have shared a drink and F. Scott Fitzgerald would have written the Pat Hobby stories and had all the conversations that eventually found their way into The Last Tycoon, which was his last finished, well, 
incomplete novel, but they finished it with his notes. Now right here basically is where the house would have been, the main house, and then kind of behind this McDonald's is where the Black Sea pool would have been. And like I said, the property was three and a half acres wide, so it was basically a rectangle with this part facing sunset being the shorter part of the rectangle. But yeah, I mean, that's crazy to think everyone from Rachmaninoff to Buster Keaton to Lawrence Olivier to Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall, Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis, um, I mean, just anybody who had a story that was ever in Hollywood lived here. And the reason that all the, the writers lived here, like Faulkner and Chandler and all those people, Hemingway and Fitzgerald, is because during the 30s, they all got jobs with the studios writing. The studios just became obsessed with wanting these grandiose stories, and so they gave anybody who was a well-known novelist a a contract and they all lived here for a short time and basically partied here and that's what was the inspiration. Well I tell you it's pretty sad to see that literally half of the stores in this mall are all out of business. They have paper covering the windows and at one point this was the most famous and popular place to live in all of Hollywood. I mean on the strip this was even more famous than the Chateau Marmont which is right over here behind me. This was, if you were looking for a story for your life, if you were looking to live wildly, live freely, without abandonment, apparently, they had, like I said, orgies. This was said to be a 30-year non-stop party more than a residence. That should tell you pretty much all you need to know about the Garden of Allah, but it's sad that it's gone and long live the Garden of Allah and all the great people and stories that originated and we've come to read about from here. Well, that's Hollywood history for you folks. What once was a single solitary house right here, right in front of where we're looking, became the biggest hotel and most storied hotel probably in Hollywood history for its time. And it's now a dilapidated strip mall on prime real estate of Hollywood hosting McDonald's. That's history for you. And not even a plaque to remember it by. That's the plaque. I've actually wanted to do the vlog on the Garden of Allah for so long, but that's been one that I've had to research in pieces for a while because you just find little sections of information in various places as well as pictures and up until now I couldn't figure out all of the angles I wanted to show or I would think I knew what kind of story I wanted to tell and then I would find out even more before that more before that I mean I was gonna start this with basically like the 30s and then I you know so it's like sometimes these vlogs are a work in progress and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the Garden of Allah or what was the Garden of Allah it is rather strange walking down the street and seeing that there is now a Buddhist temple where the Garden of Allah once was. Woo! All right, I just made it home. I gotta change clothes because I sweat all the way through my shirt. Let me tell you some vlogger woes. This is something that happens to me every once in a while and I, I, don't, I never tell you guys about it, but I'm gonna tell you today because I almost ruined this entire vlog. For some reason, this hap it started happening in Sweden. I don't know what happened, but um, when I press the record button on this camera, every once in a while, maybe I'm not pushing it hard enough or I don't know what it is, but it doesn't start recording. And then I go on a diatribe for five minutes and then when I press stop recording, it starts recording and then I get footage that's my camera just swinging at my side. So today I went out, started the vlog and did about five segments and then walked back to the car and decided, you know what, I should probably check those just to make sure everything came out okay. I got the first segment and then everything else was when I had stopped the camera and my camera swinging. So everything that I had recorded didn't get recorded. And instead of going back and sitting and listening through five minutes of what I've already recorded, I just rec just deleted it all and had to go back and restart over and do it all over again. So it's a different vlog than it was the first time, but that sometimes happens and I just wanted you guys to know that's 
one of those, if you're ever going to think about vlogging or whatnot, or if you ever wonder what goes into doing this on a daily basis beyond the research and the recording and the editing and the posting it and scheduling it and everything on YouTube, you also have to account for sometimes you will screw up the vlog and you will have to go back and re-record it. Luckily, I caught it while I was, you know, just a block or two away parked on the street and I could walk back over and go restart, but sometimes that's a real pain and I certainly am going to make sure that does not happen on the special vlog tomorrow. <laughs> but I got to change clothes now because I'm going to actually meet the manager or the guy who I'm having a meeting with. We're actually going to meet up here in like an hour. So I'm going to change clothes, turn the AC on and relax. Well, this tree fell about, oh, two, three months ago. Wonder what they're waiting on. They've had this busted up pavement here on the sidewalk for that whole time. All right, well, we had the meeting and uh, you know what? Actually, I like the guy a lot. Um, he seems pretty trustworthy to me. And, um, you know, we talked a lot about kind of what my goals are for my acting career and what I want to do. Not so much what I have to do, but what I want to do. And, um, and where kind of where the industry is right now. And I agree with his stance on um, pretty much everything we talked about. So he gave me a contract and uh, I'm going to go home and read it. And if it looks pretty good to me, um, I think pretty much everything we talked about as far as the terms are pretty standard with my um, agent contract. So I will, uh, I'll read it through and if I decide to sign it, I'm gonna let him know and he's gonna start the process of adding me to his roster and uh, getting everything as far as like the um, auditioning websites, everything put in so that he's able to submit me for things. So we shall see it's always good if you get a good vibe from somebody when you meet them um and i did and he likes what i do already he already sees the potential so probably gonna be a go Day I stopped smoking, been drinking, and backslap joking. I dreamt all night, so vivid, so clear, so real.